Hi friends, welcome to another process video with me. Um, here we have my Roma and Juliet piece that I finished up in January. Um, I started it, I want to say end of November, maybe early December. Um, this definitely was a, a longer term piece just with everything else that I had going on. Um, but I am very happy with this journey. I think I learned a lot, which is always the goal. Um, and of course, this is more fan art for Chloe Gong's Our Violent Ends, or These Violent Delights, Our Violent Ends um, duology. Uh, she's amazing. Her books are amazing. I love these characters. I cannot stop drawing them. So I hope that you continue to enjoy them. Um, but this was a piece I definitely uh, pushed myself in some new ways. I tried to add more background elements, which you might have seen I've been pushing a little bit in my art in general lately. Um, to just kind of tell more of a story and as someone who wants to you know maybe eventually do a book cover or you know book campaigns for published authors or publishing authors like I want to be able to effectively tell stories um, and one of the things about this piece in particular you might notice that I jumped right into color which is a thing that I've been doing lately I have given up on my black and white to color um you know I might revisit it at some point but I think I said this in my last uh longer process video um it wasn't serving me anymore it was truly adding a lot more struggle um to my process and to what I was trying to accomplish and it was adding time it was taking away from some of my enjoyment um and so it's been fun to just jump straight into color. Um, and so you, you know, earlier in this video, as I was rambling, because what else is new? Um, I trial and error a lot. Like things are constantly going to change. You know, I'm always going to be slightly adjusting colors as I go. Because, you know, the mood is always going to need something else. And I'm still learning again. We're all still learning. I will repeat that until the day I die. Um, and so it's okay to trial and error to, you know, once you lay down color, this is digital. You don't have to stick to it. You can try new things, um, adjust, alter, whatever you need to do. Um, so there is a lot of that constantly, always, especially in pieces that aren't a commission piece and where I just have the final say, like I don't have someone to tell me to change anything. Um, so yeah, this piece, we jump straight into color and then what I've been doing also is sort of merging everything onto one layer or like all of the subject onto one layer. So Roma and Juliet are on their one layer. Um, I sometimes keep the line art or the you know, the refined sketch um, on its own layer for a little bit, depending. Um, I'll usually duplicate that. So I do have it saved in a more pure state of being uh, for a while or forever. Um, but yeah, I have the subjects on their one layer and then I'll go in clipping mask um, and play with some layer modes and just try to lay down some shadow um, and some highlight to get a foundation of where I want things. Um, and again, it's just sort of a jumping off point. Um, things will often change. And as you can see, like I just went into color lookup, like I'm always kind of adjusting and pushing and changing things in its own ways. Um, and this piece will go through some larger color adjustments as well, uh, because this is a piece that I worked on with Silas A in our mentorship, which I'm still doing, uh, still highly recommend. It is completely progressed my art in ways that I would have never thought possible um, on my own. Or, you know, I could have perhaps achieved it, but it would have taken a lot longer and with a lot more tears, probably. <laughs> um, but yeah, so once I had taken this piece to her, you know, we did some bigger adjustments um, to kind of get the right mood. And that's something that 
I I do tend to lean towards more of a um a theatrical dramatic kind of cinematic lighting in my pieces like maybe it's because I work in theater and I see that kind of lighting in my day to day um but that's what I'm typically very drawn towards um and so it usually has you know very that just I don't know, just a big vibe to it. Um, but with this piece, what we ended up doing, and you'll see I'm getting ahead of myself, um, is really kind of toning it down and leaning into the dramatics to the other end and working kind of more low contrast, um, low values, and darker vibes, which was a lot of fun and a big struggle. Um as usual on these pieces, it's just a lot of like noodling, toggling things on and off. Um, I call these like process videos, which like visually it is a process, but it's also just me like rambling, drinking my coffee um, <laughs> while you watch it happen. I'm not very good at, you know, just talking about what I'm doing, um, but as always, um, you know, just anything that's uploaded to YouTube um, to the public, but especially on Patreon where these videos originate. Um, if you have anything specific that you want me to talk about or address, please, please, please always ask because I will try to gear what I'm saying towards what you guys want to hear um, or know more about. As always, I'm no expert. Like, I'm just doing my thing out here and trying my best as we all are. Um, and again, always a lot of trial and error. Um, I am trying to be better about like painting on different layers, like on a layer on top. Um, sometimes I forget and I do just paint directly on to the piece, um, you know, full scent. <laughs> um, I definitely wanted to make sure that I was getting her facial features um, correctly. So I did pull in more references to just sort of tweak and make sure that I was, you know, hitting all of the marks. Like, this is a character I love. I love her so much. Um, she's such an amazing character. Um, they both are. But, you know, I want to do the character justice. And that includes, you know, making sure that I am tackling her facial features correctly and not, like, whitewashing her Um in any way shape or form so yeah there was a lot of um care and detailing going into her face um and his as well uh but you know i just definitely wanted to make sure that i was hitting the mark um where she was concerned so there was a lot of a lot of extra care extra reference um getting and i do typically have like a larger reference sheet um, that I'll have up on, on pure ref on this piece. I, because I kind of was using a pose, um, and, you know, not really shifting that a lot aside from the characters and the vibe and the, the costuming. Um, I didn't have as big of a reference sheet, so it wasn't as, um, as much reference grabbing and searching for, um, but yeah, you know, just trying to really think about values on this piece, um, how they stand out on the background, how the background, you know, does it, does it fade into, you know, the distance enough? Is it taking too much attention? Um, that's something that I'm just trying to be more aware of and more intentional of as I go forward. Um, there you can see I did, you know, have my reference up for a little bit. Um, you know, shifted some things, but for the most part, like that pose was the jumping off point. Um, and I think now we've entered the, the portion of the process where I've had my mentorship and, you know, shifted some things you can see they have become, um, much darker. I leaned far more into this sort of like monochromatic vibe without like being monochromatic, um, and really trying to keep these, low value, um, very subtle value shifts, especially in their faces. Um, and just making sure that I lean into that darker lighting, um, which I was timid to do. And I did need, you know, 
someone whose art that I look up to and someone who inspires me to, you know, tell me that it's okay to, you know, not everything has to be in lighting, even if they're the subjects. Like, with everything else that's going on in the piece, they still do stand out the way that they're supposed to. Um, So, yeah, we have tweaked um trust the process that was my reminder for myself because there was definitely a lot within this piece that I was like oh my gosh you know this just feels so different than anything else I've done um you know I just started to kind of need that reminder that it would be okay you know they look insane right now um but trust the process it will all work out it'll all get to where it has to be So with my art lately, I've definitely been leaning more towards character interaction and just having a lot of fun doing that. Um, And it's something that I want to continue to work on and improve on, Um, you know, and that will definitely include a lot more anatomy studies and gesture studies um, to continue to sort of hone this aspect of of my skill. Um, I think with faces and emotions, I'm definitely getting to a place that I'm mostly happy with like relatively happy with um but I think you know I mean there's always room for improvement in every aspect but especially my anatomy I think that's something that I can work on focusing towards um but yeah liking what I'm doing with faces lately and just sort of leaning into how I'm rendering them I don't know I just feel like something has shifted lately um and I'm happy about it so that's that's my little um happiness as I continue to trust the process um yes we're just doing some more face work you know pushing pushing in those shadows pushing some highlights um but again working within a smaller value range which is a struggle for me um even when I'm not working in low lighting I I definitely go too heavy either way um when I'm rendering skin um I definitely want to do some skin tone studies and just really really focus some energy to lean into like the subtle value shifts and also the shut the the, the, the subtle <laughs> we're struggling here today um the subtle uh hue shifts as well within skin tones like I want to really push that and work towards improving that um so that's you know down the line you might see some content like that as always if you do have a specific part of my process or um you know a specific type of studying that I begin to do let me know um I do always want to address the things that you guys want to know more about um and it's also good for me to have to like think about what I'm doing um as opposed to just doing it um it's a very different (laughs) aspect um and honestly making these recordings has been quite a journey um they always I don't know they take a lot of energy um but it's it's hard to think about what I was thinking about when I was doing the pieces um it's kind of like one of the hard parts about like switching to video format as opposed to streaming you know when I'm in it and can say what I'm thinking um yeah I think going forward we've got we'll we'll get some better content we're we're working on it we're working on improving um but yeah we're just we're just focusing on these faces really trying to get the the plane shifts as well um one of the things that has become very very satisfying to me is that like highlighted corner um by the eye heading into the nose like that is such a satisfying little burst of light um I really enjoy um pinpointing that highlight and adding it um but yeah I I did end up quite happy with this piece um obviously over time as I continue to look at it I see things that I would like to change um but you know I that's that's kind of part of the journey is never just even when you're happy with a piece for me I always want to think about what I can improve on um because there's always something And 
I'll always be chasing that next level of improvement. Um, yeah, so we're shifting, shifting, you saw shifting some things around, doing a little bit of liquefy, kind of remembering to zoom out is something that's, that's hard to do. I need to remember to, to do that. And again, really think big picture and let that be a, a part of my process. Um, I always struggle with big picture, but we're trying. We're we're slowly getting better. Um, I do think that that the big picture of this piece um, overall is one of my better, um, better done. I don't I don't know. I don't know what I'm trying to say. <laughs> you know, if I was smart, I would record like smaller. I mean, I do break up on these longer ish videos, but I just let myself fumble. I feel like you guys are here for me being a hot mess. Um, at least I hope so. <laughs> I really hope so. Honestly, I'm probably the only one that listens to these and that's okay with me. Like I said, I'm learning a lot from talking about it. Uh, but here we are. Um, yeah, trying to be better about bigger picture. And I'm trying to remember to see that bigger picture and on this piece, I am happy with the big picture, even though there are things that I would improve on now after having let this sit for a while. Um, but I really, I like how, I think I, in my other video from this month, um, talked about how sometimes like when I zoom out, like a face might look kind of weird. And I've talked about this um, in mentorship with, with Syl. Um, and so we've been working on that a bit, but I think on this piece, I mean, not right now because his face is not finished um, and he looks uh, cuckoo bananas crazy right now. But I think that the finished piece of this, once I zoomed out, the big picture, the main idea, I am happy with, with how it all came together. Um, and I did ultimately have a lot of fun, you know, pushing these lower values and working in these contained ranges it was it was a, a challenge um but I did end up enjoying that process I have you know another lower lit piece coming up that's a commission so we're just we're continuing you know to apply what I learn um ears are weird gotta think about ears gotta gotta study some ears um, I want to do some costume studies as well. I bought a costume history book that I'm very excited about. I have a lot of books right now, you guys. Oh, it's rambling hour. I have a lot of books right now. Um, I really want to focus my studying um, and like study with intention as opposed to just like doing something and calling it a study. Um, so I have books that I want to like read and dedicate time towards and just, you know, really work on sharpening my skill set because I can only get so far by being sort of aimless in my attempt to grow and study and so kind of trying to pinpoint and have a little bit more specificity when I am studying or trying to study is something that I want to work towards of course you know time time is the eternal struggle but we'll get there. We'll always get there, right? We're all together um, in this in this journey. Um, any artists who might be watching this, let me know. Let me know what you want to study and work towards. Um, I want to study, you know, historical clothing. Um, I want to study anatomy. Uh, I want to get better at backgrounds. I have a I have a long long list. Um, and I need to kind of break it down so that I can tackle it and feel less overwhelmed by the amount that is on it. <laughs> um, but isn't that the, the eternal struggle? Um, one of my favorite things about this piece and one of the things that I had a lot of fun with was the way that I, that I was able to lean into the really like bright, bright sky and that kind of like gray moody dramatic vibe but then those really bright highlights that like hit the wall like behind her neck I just I really like that part of this piece that like little triangle of light that like 
highlights the curve of her neck like that long elegant um you know that long elegant curve and line i enjoyed that i hope you guys enjoyed it as well <laughs> With this piece, um, there's really not a whole lot of like fancy process. Not that there's ever um, much fanciness to my process, but this one was pretty streamlined in terms of just kind of painting and vibing. Um, I stick to a, a hard round that has, you know, pen pressure and opacity turned on to get like, you know, some variation. Um, I switch to a soft, more airbrush kind of brush at times, and I have a texture brush that I use. All of these came from um, Fernanda Suarez's pack uh, that I got through her Patreon, um, and I just sort of stick to those. Um, she also has like a multitask brush that I will use on like skin tone sometimes. Um, or on skin to get like a little bit more texture sometimes or like the edges of hair um because that one kind of like does some cool stuff but pretty much it, it's very simple over here i don't i don't do a lot in terms of of different brushes um yeah so that little like splotchy one that i was using for a bit on his shirt um to kind of like brush in some different colors and and whatnot that's the multitask brush and I quite like that one um but yeah I don't I have I have a lot of brushes I feel like as an artist we always hoard them um but yeah I kind of stick to the main three maybe four um per piece um every now and again I will wander out of that um if I need something more specific texture wise um but yeah for the most part like just a, a simple round brush has been has been kind of my go-to um for the past several pieces and you know I'm happy happy with the rendering quality and then mixing in just a little bit of texture um again with that like multitask brush or my texture brush um that are from Fernanda you know it it does what I want it to do do um and I don't think it has to be much more complicated than that um like whatever whatever works for your process and for the results that you want to get like that's what that's what counts um so yeah we keep it simple this this really is just a piece that's about painting and about you know these these low tones um so it is it is quite simple in that respect um, I think I'm gonna I'm gonna be quiet for a little bit and let you guys just watch, um, put some music on in the background, um, and just just vibe as I you know continue to work on painting this. Thank you for watching. I'll I'll pop in back at the end. Don't worry. <laughs>
I do just want to pop in um, towards the end here and just talk a little bit about my like finishing process on um, a piece of art, especially like this, uh, where atmosphere is a huge part of it. Um, so what you'll see me do is take a really soft airbrush and just begin to take background colors and brush them over the characters. Um, and this will be, you know, where there's light streaming through, brighter colors down at the bottom, um, using, you know, those darker background colors. Um, and just letting things fade is something that I um, have really been working to accept and get better at. Um, and then adding just some little floaties just to kind of, I don't know, make some atmosphere and make it feel a little magical. Um, so that's sort of something that you'll see throughout my pieces. Um, I do this kind of a lot. Um, but yeah, that's that's this piece. That's what we have done. Um, you can see here the final piece. You can also see it on my socials, my website, my DeviantArt, um, and on my print shop. Prints um, are up now or will be up soon, depending on when you're seeing this. Um, but yeah, thank you guys for watching this video. Um, as always, let me know in the comments if you have something else that you want to see. All right, have a good rest of your day, my friends. Bye!